So as you know, Opus 4.5 came out and so far it's basically like the top dog model, but I will say that it's not necessarily the best. I built out quite a lot of stuff using Agenda Coding. This is my latest tool. This is a video editor that I actually started using to edit my YouTube videos and my course videos, where I can go in and find areas of dead air, find areas where it recommends that I cut the flow because I ramble or I'm going off on tangents. And this has been really, really useful instead of having to load up Premiere Pro, which is a little bit more powerful. I can just use my application Rapid Cut to quickly slice up my videos and get them published to YouTube. I've also used Agenda Coding to build out a multiplayer online game. This is using WebSockets. I basically, I 95% of all this code, if more, was built using Agenda Coding. Of course, I have Automaker, which we built out on my Discord using Agenda Coding. And this is actually building out an application as I speak right now. I pointed it to a project. It's basically adding in 100 features. And I'll come back later and check this. And the reason I'm running this is because we just added Cursor CLI support, or at least we're in the process of adding it and kind of testing it out. So that'll be out soon. So go check out Automaker if you're curious about using this with Cursor Composer, which is a really fast model. And then finally, we have my Agentic Jumpstart course, which is, by the way, if you guys are interested in learning all the things I've learned along the way, building out these tools I'm showing you, go check out agenticjumpstart.com. We have over 74 videos, 11 and a half hours of content. I talk about Claude Code. I talk about Cursor. I walk you through context engineering, prompt engineering, and all the tips and tricks I've learned along the way. And then, of course, at the end, we build out a full stack web application using Tanstack Start and Drizzle and Postgres and getting it deployed to Railway. Now, I know you guys are annoyed that I'm showing you all these tools that I built, but literally I am building these tools in like a matter of days. Rapid Cut took maybe one or two days. I let Automaker build on the initial set of features overnight. I came back and I started sprucing up. And there is a specific workflow that I'm currently using for building out these tools. The first thing is Opus 4.5 is a really good model, but it's not the best. I have seen Opus go through and blow away changes and make bugs in areas that you haven't even prompted it to do. One good example is in this timeline editor. I told it that I want to be able to click my mouse anywhere and move the playhead directly where I click. And that worked. I added it in, Opus did it. And then I told it to add the ability to drag the timeline. And then when it added in the drag ability, it went back and it deleted my click ability. And this is not just my experience. I've been talking to my core contributors on Automaker and they also think that Opus sometimes just goes off and delete stuff and just break stuff. So not only do these models have a mind of their own sometimes, I often cannot implement complex features with Opus 4.5. If you have a simple CRUD endpoint or like a flow that just does like the traditional front end, back end, you know, connect it, maybe do some queries to the database, Opus does great. It can actually implement all these 30, 40 file changes and often one shot it and have it work from the first attempt. But I have found with building out something more complex, like a video editor in this timeline, that you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can scroll left, you can pan right, you can click and delete stuff, you can actually undo and redo. That's when it starts losing its ability to stay on the track of what you're trying to build out. And I will say that I have been building out context files that list out the requirements of how the timeline works. Every single feature is listed out here so that I hope that the, the LLM can kind of stick to the plan and not go off the guardrails. But even with this, it ends up breaking existing functionality and it just can't implement some features when they're just too complex. So what is my actual workflow then? If I, if I don't just rely on Opus 4.5, what do I do? So it turns out I will use Opus 4.5 as the main broad stroke brush, right? So you just want the entire feature basically implemented. You assume it's not gonna perfectly get implemented or it's gonna have some issues and you have to reprompt it. But Opus 4.5 is my first go-to model. So I would have used Opus to build out this initial page, maybe use it to build out this initial timeline, continue to prompt it a couple times to add in whatever features I want. But at some point you're gonna hit an issue and you're gonna have to dive into a different model. Now the model I like diving into is GPT 5.2. I found this model has solved so many different bugs. And I typically just kick it off in cursor. I do have Codex installed as well, which you can use to run GPT 5.2. I keep hearing stories that cursor is gonna not you know, most efficiently use the model and you have to use these CLI tools to get the most efficiency. I don't know how true that is, but I've been kicking off various things that Opus 4.5 cannot fix over here in cursor and it basically will one shot and fix the solution for me. So don't sleep on GPT 5.2. I find it to be a really powerful model, especially for like the complex debugging. So again, Opus for the initial feature, GPT 5.2 for fixing up any issues or any really complex things that Opus can't do. And then when the UI looks pretty terrible, 
I usually fall to two different things. I do have a UI UX Pro skill installed. So if you're using Claude Code, you can install a skill. And if you go over to my Claude directory, you'll see I have a skill here called UI UX Max Pro. And this has a bunch of built-in data in it for like designs like glass morphism, minimalism, et cetera. So you can kind of use these keywords that have Claude Code just produce better UIs. But even with that, I found that it's just not as good as the model that I like using the best. So the third thing I do in my workflow is I will use Gemini 3 Pro. When the UI needs a little bit of a spruce up, I will kick it off into Gemini 3 Pro. I will tell it, you are a UX expert. Please research the best UX and design for this type of application. I'll maybe feed it an image, and then it comes back, and it just makes it look uh, a lot better. Okay, so anything UI related or design related, I will use Gemini 3 Point Pro. I do think it's still the best model for that. And then finally, the fourth thing I do in my workflow is after I have the feature implemented, maybe I have some end-to-end -end tests covering it, and I have it looking nice. I will use Composer 1. I know people don't seem like they like Composer 1. I think Composer 1 is a great model for basically refactoring your code. And what do I mean by that? So you can give it like a React component that's like a thousand lines long, and you can say, hey, can you please refactor this into smaller subcomponents? And Composer 1 will just cook, man. It'll just go through, split that up into smaller subcomponents, and it does it super fast. And I like how it can just quickly iterate. Sometimes it makes a mistake, and I can just reprompt it again, and it goes through and fixes the mistake. I also use Composer 1 for running my tests. I will typically say, hey, Composer 1, I need you to keep on running my tests until they all pass. And then it runs the test. It'll go through and fix the test up. It'll go and fix any implementation that it broke. And then it'll run the test again. It has a faster iteration speed. So if it's not something huge that I need a giant plan for, like Opus 4.5, you can do plan mode. You can set up skills. For example, in Claude Code, I have a superpowers plugin, which kind of lets you do more in-depth planning and brainstorming before building out a feature. But even with this stuff, it just does not always figure out the complex features you're trying to add in. And also, I don't want to have to sit here and wait for this stuff to refactor my code. Like if it's a super complex refactoring or like a security refactoring, then yeah, I'd probably use Opus 4.5 or use uh, Codex 5.2. It's just, they're just very slow. And I do like the iteration speed of a Composer 1. I feel like if Composer 1 could just be a little bit higher quality model and like be more accurate, I would probably default to Composer 1 every single time. But these other models are a little bit more powerful. They do take their time and that can really help with one-shotting these features and making sure that they're actually accurate. Okay, so that's my overall workflow right now. You might say I'm using too many models and like I don't know how to properly prompt Opus 4.5, but as I've explained, I built out a lot of different projects, right? I built out tons of different projects. I've tried these different models and I've run into limitation after limitation with using them. And I do think the best way to become an agent decoder is to really get a handle for what these models are good at and what they're not good at. So if you want any more tips and tricks of how to do efficient agent decoding, go to agenticjumpstart.com and go check out my course. Again, I got a lot of content to help you become the best agent decoder that you can be. Have have a good day and happy coding.